The Enterprise File Fabric also provides a wide range of security features to ensure the protection and integrity of your users as well as your data. So logged in as the organization admin, I can come back over and go into policies. And let's take a look at the security section of the environment. So as we look down, we're able to do things like restrict access to the file fabric based on a certain range of IPs. You're using things like our default authentication system. You know, we can do things like enforce passwords, set lockout after so many unsuccessful attempts. And the other key thing is allow for two-factor authentication in order to get into the system. So it's very simple. You know, I can turn it on right here. Uh, out of the box, we've got three different mechanisms that can be used for that two-factor authentication. Uh, here's the most common, using a GUA authenticator or time-based one-time password. You know, your users would be able to scan this QR code, and then each time that they're attempting to log into the system, we'll go and prompt them for a second factor to be entered from that, from that application. Or we can do a predefined passphrase, or even potentially an email, where again, a user would receive an email with a code they have to enter each time that they attempt to log in. The second part of security is encryption. So the Enterprise File Fabric supports both encryption in transit as well as encryption at rest. So this demo environment right now is running over HTTPS. So all of the data that's flowing back and forth, both from this web interface, as well as through the desktop and mobile tools, which also go over HTTPS, is all encrypted by default. In addition, we can support encryption at rest of the data as well through a variety of methods. The first being native transparent encryption, right? So if you have div storage devices like a NAS device that potentially has things like self-encrypting drives, uh, or if you're using object storage with the ability to do bucket level encryption or things like SSEC, we can fully support that. So that would allow the data being encrypted automatically on the backend system, regardless of whether or not we turn this feature on or off from our side. But you may decide either to add an additional layer of security with this encryption, or you may realize that your existing backend storage doesn't support any encryption at rest, and you can go and enable it here. So now, as the org admin, if I enable encryption here, uh, out of the box, we have two different methods for encryption keys. So the first is manually entering it in here. Uh, we also support external KMS with HashiCorp Vault being the KMS that we currently support. That then allows you to come in and enable our transparent encryption of data at rest. So this uses a FIPS 140-2 compliance cipher and allows you then to come and decide how you want to encrypt that data, right? So here I actually have my demo environment set up as nominated folders, but you can select this and say all shared team folders are encrypted, all shared team folders plus the user files that are encrypted, or as I did here, like I said, only the nominated folders. So once this is in place, now, as I said, you have the passphrase, uh, you have nominated folders. As the org admin, I can come within here and go to my file manager and then have a new folder that we want to be encrypted. So let's go and create a new folder here under NAS. Let's call it our secure folder. We'll make it a share team folder to share out to my organization like we showed before. But now I'm gonna go up and if I right click on that folder, we now have the option to say nominate for encryption. And there you see, now there's a key that shows that the data is encrypted. So all the data that we read and write into this folder would be stored on that NAS natively in a AES 256 uh, bit encrypted format. So that allows you that if that data were to get leaked on the back end or somebody has access directly to that NAS, they would not be able to read that data. Only when viewing it through the enterprise file fabric would that transparently be encrypted and decrypted as they read and write that data. And the last thing I'll show quickly from an encryption standpoint uh, is we do also allow you, if you did need to unencrypt that data out a band of the file fabric, we have decryption tools here, both for Mac, Windows, and Linux, where you would download that tool, 
you would take the encryption passphrase as well as the decryption key and those encrypted files and it will decrypt you for that, decrypt those for you automatically. So both with two-factor authentication, with IP restrictions, as well as encryption both in transit and at rest, the Enterprise File Fabric allows you to be safe and secure in both your users that access the data, as well as the data 